Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Vandalize for victory. Humans have a strange views on honor. Written by Slow AD 2584. The War Council was appalled. The General Lord Commander of all war operations against the human foe stood before the military tribunal still oddly wearing his field command helmet for the hearing. What is the meaning of the ceasefire against these pitiful humans? How can you possibly justify the assurance of peace? And why are you wearing that ridiculous thing still? Your bearing does not represent your family heritage very well. Not at all, I must say. The general shifted uncomfortably. This hearing was very significant, and his family honor would suffer indeed. Several titles of barony over a moon or two will be revoked over this, certainly. Honor and reputation was very important, after all. The family heraldry may even get a black mark upon it for the centuries to come, because of this. Those damnable humans. Members of the tribunal, my helmet is still bored for reasons that will become clear at the end of this inquiry. I'm sorry to insist, General, that you remove your combat helmet this instant. Your honors demand it. Reluctantly, the General removed his helmet and stood there in shape. I, uh, I do not want to say what happened to you. Why would you ever dream to do such a dishonorable thing? The General was indeed in a sorry state. Both of his horns were broken, splintered into shameful stumps. His fangs that in bio records were remarkably very nobly long. All four ripped out, revealing disgusting basil pink gum pits, something only convicted criminals had to live with for the rest of their lives in slavery. Indeed, the once noble general looked very much like a lowest commoner, plebe, slave. Even as a disfigured criminal, it was appalling. Worst of all, the regal tattoos up the left and right side of his face were uh, obliterated. Somehow, the ink under the skin was disrupted. The marks and deeply ceremonial awards were unrecognizable. Yes, I know. I can never return to my home or family after this. He waved his hand to indicate his face. I made a mistake of being alone near some of the humans. They got too close and overpowered me for a few minutes before the gods could arrive. That was all the time it took. The outrage! Certainly, those humans were... Oh, yes, they were captured, and are undeniably all dead. But, as they say, the damage was already done. This makes no sense. Why would such a defeated race be so savage? It's a human term. It's called uh, spite, or, or maybe vindictive. They were defeated, yes. Overpowered, absolutely. Their weapons were utterly ineffective against our ships, our soldiers, our bases. They were unable to so much as scratch anything. The only thing they had left to attack was our honor. We never knew such an attack was even possible before beating them. This is greatly disturbing. I demand details. How could these humans, which are utterly ineffective war gear, have possibly overcome this in any way to bring us all to a ceasefire table? This is unbelievable. Where is their honor? They, uh, say uh, they, they wear their honor on their sleeve, so it is easier to rip off when the crap gets real. And, uh, it's time to wipe their ass, um, or something like that. Uh, I never quite understood human biofunctions. The fighting started with the first ship-to-ship -ship engagements at their planet Saturn. It became quickly apparent that their weapons could not penetrate our armor, and was really only minimally effective at cosmetic damage on the surface of our ships. Their ships were slow and frail, easily devastated by our weaponry. Within a relatively short time, however, their tactics had changed. They focused their pitiful kinetic weaponry and missiles against our exterior comms antenna, the flag bridge windows, then the regal observation copulas. Also, any marks of heraldry, honorifics, merits, and even competency uh, chevrons were purposely obliterated before the plotting human craft were overcome and destroyed. By Jupiter, the human craft were no longer manned. 
and were remote operated. But the devasing and stripping of all regalia increased. As time wore on, the humans somehow learned of other fragile, seeming inconsequential systems vulnerable to attack, and those were effectively scrubbed off of our ships repeatedly. So they knew they couldn't defeat us, then they bothered with resistance. And uh, to what end? Well, uh, there was a bit of logic to it, truth be told. It was clear now, in hindsight, with our communications and with IFF transponders and command interface nodes destroyed, our fleet line ships, which were still technically full operational for battle, had to repeatedly fall back to a field repair depot for repairs. By the time the same ship had returned six times for repairs and restoration of destroyed regalia, we began to understand. It was shameful to return again and again to get repaired. It mattered not at all how many victories we achieved over the humans. The dock workers began to jeer and roll their eyes, taking bets on which glorious fleet ship would return the most. There was even a human TKO scoreboard on display. The tribunal only stared in horror. They could not imagine such an awful situation, where the commoners were laughing at nobility. So how were the human ships enduring these encounters all this time? Oh, not a single one of them survived. They were still utterly ineffective, slow and frail, and were destroyed completely and almost instantly every single time. But they still had enough time to do their foul attacks. By the time we got to Mars, the humans had adapted their attacks and their drone ship's designs. They were able to survive 2% long and were able to more effectively stain our honor as well. How could this possibly have gotten any worse? The tribunal hesitantly asked. The situation was already untenable. They were all struggling to find a resolution, a way to correct or undo any of this. But every time they looked at the general's disfigured, obviously dishonored face, they could only shudder in despair. Have you heard of human, uh, dirty baby diapers? Well, I hadn't either. But now I know the term as the most horrid of projectile ammunitions. Apparently the humans had billions of tons of these things stockpiled up for some reason and had rapidly designed and deployed a weapons to accurately shoot these through space at all of our ships at an astonishing rate. I will never get the sound of them splatting against our bridge and command and control windows out of my mind ever again. Oh, and the smell. It was truly remarkable how it managed to get inside a pressurized ship interior, but uh, it always seemed to find a way. Human newborns are disgusting little horrors. The battle over Mars was the most intense, relatively speaking. It appeared to be the human last stand. By the time all of the pathetic and abusive drone ships were obliterated, our entire fleet was stripped of essential comms, all regalia was defaced, and now all windows and airlock hatches were plastered with human baby waste. When we returned to the depot for repair, our cleaning prior to the final push, the jeers and disdain became howls of disgust and outrage from our own ship workers. It was beginning to get too much. What good is being victorious in battle if you always return to base brutalized and covered in crap? This tribunal was the strategic solution the humans' unwinnable situation was that they came up with. I realized at this point that uh, we haven't really faced any actual humans in person for some time now. This was all done via proxy. I knew that we could press on to Earth itself unopposed after the Martian last stand, but looking forward to land and occupy their world with actual humans all around us day and night, even after Mars during depot refit, I started to see the writing on the wall. But you did land on Earth, wiped out their military forces, and established a beachhead base. Yes, we did. Ultimately, the human planetary weapon and war gear were still utterly ineffective. It did not take long. Yet, as I feared, we continued to suffer indignities at every opportunity. But your base had security defense, correct? 
and with no means at all to so much as damage anything. Oh, the sensors, uh, defenses, roving patrols, all of that. It turns out humans are very sneaky. They seem to have a way to see the world and how our foes would see it. How sensors see it. To predict their perspective and act accordingly. This allows them to identify our honor as something vulnerable. And also made it rather easy to evade our security scanners and patrols, it seems. Because every morning we found our empirical, regional, faction, and family herald flags and banners stolen. Inevitably found burning in a bonfire outside the main base gate. Under all the security cameras and gun emplacements, I still cannot figure out exactly how they kept doing that. But they would have had to scale the walls, get to the top of the very central command bunker. Yes, yes, I know all of that. But the fact remained every morning, then the uniforms. Ugh. The humans discovered our field dress uniform cleaning service shuttles and uh, managed to... Uh, well, I, I still don't know how, but managed to swap our field dress uniforms with the most horrific dirty baby diapers. Our dress uniforms and all ribbons and awards were found burning in the flags one morning. At every single turn, our honor was vandalized, a term I learned from studying Cuban history during my time there. The word comes from a barbarian tribe that contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. In the distant past, the vandal hordes defaced and ruined what they could not carry away with them. And the term stuck. Yes, our honor was being vandalized. There were attacks in person as well. Groups of humans with hammers, pliers, and detattoo lasers would infiltrate our base and pounce on a lone soldier, overpowering them to deface and demean them. Myself was included with such indignities to my eternal shame. I still have no idea where they came from or how the several rather burly humans could be so silent and unseen. The general gestured to his face again as he continued. The uniforms and my personal uh, mugging were the final straw. I knew our entire force would like nothing better than to leave those vile humans and never return. There was nothing to be gained here. We had already won and claimed the world. There was no opposition, militarily. But it was clear that there was nothing to be gained, only to suffer. There was even talk of classing this honorable and repugnant world. I called for a ceasefire with the humans and a negotiation of our complete withdrawal. To our relief, we saw the attacks end completely. Our flags arose intact to see the next morning. It turns out this vandalism was not their core nature of being, but rather a tactical strategy that literally dishonored us to the negotiating table. There was the fastest evacuation withdrawal in recorded military history. We could not get away from them fast enough. The tribunal stated with a trembling voice, We we see now what you had to deal with and to endure. We will now convene and work on a solution to this appalling situation. What is the point of victory if we cannot return home retaining our honor? You were dismissed, General. Uh, obviously, the responsibilities of your office is no longer maintainable with your current uh, <laughs> disposition. You shall be retired with ignominy and the end of this tribunal hearing. I'm afraid... Uh, what will you do, j j, j citizen With that, the general tore off his previous rank, insignia, name, heraldry, and other regalia, and left it all on the floor as he turned and left the tribunal, without saying another word, leaving the tribunal sputtering with impotence. He walked out of the military court and off the base towards the spaceport docks. There was a freighter there, its markings and honors violently torn away, and waiting on the dock was more than the entire ship's complement of servicemen. Similarly, mutilated and dishonorably discharged, and who stripped of all of their ranks and regalia as well. They greeted the retired general, struggling not to salute. Those days were over. This group was to be disposed. The Ronin, a certain human would label them. Others might call them the free blade. The general preferred that term. One of the senior rank Ronin asked the former general, What shall we do? Where can we go? The citizen gave a wry smile. Ironically enough, during the negotiations of withdrawal, the humans came to understand my future outlook after they had done. 
and, well, offered me a job with a very interesting dental and cosmetic surgery benefits plan. But, 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 but wouldn't that be treason? Ah, well, we were already judged as dishonored, are we not? Look at us. The humans taught me a new facet about honor. In the end, in a way, they freed my bonds and actually made me a free citizen. I hold no fealty anymore, no family heritage obligations. It feels as if a great weight was lifted that I never even realized was upon me. I am truly a free blade. The human leaders said to me in private one day, Honor is not about what others judge of you. If you let it be that way and take it fully to heart, honor has just changed the control over your very soul. Honor is what you know and feel in your heart for your own benefit and satisfaction when you judge yourself alone with every single one of your secrets. The rest is you can wear on your sleeve and we know what a sleeve is for. They had noted that indeed I acted honorably throughout the conquest and fought hard against any notion of glassing their world. The humans were only vandalizing as their only meaningful way to fight back, and the muggings were all very careful to not kill anyone. It feels, uh, weird. No, but damn it, now I can only respect them for that. So, we shall we go. Back to us, of course. They owe us all a bit of cosmetic surgery, as they call it, and we have a lot to teach them about the galaxy beyond. But then after that, we are free! And fellow Freeblades, then we can do whatever we want. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.